The Lakers capped a 5-1 Eastern road trip with a 5-point win at Washington. Anthony Davis had 35 points and 18 rebounds. LeBron dropped 25 with 9 assists. The Lakers are 8-1 in their last 9 games, but they haven't been able to move out of the ninth spot in the Western Conference. The teams ahead of them, Dallas, Phoenix, and Sacramento, keep winning as well. With 5 games left in the regular season, moving up from the ninth spot is important. If the Lakers are ninth at the end of the season, they will have to win 2 games in the play-in round to make the playoffs. The Clippers are back in action tonight at Crypto.com. They play the Denver Nuggets. Tip-off at 7 on TNT. Kawhi Leonard's status for tonight's game is uncertain. He's got a sore right knee. Big props to Angels' new manager, Ryan Washington. The Angels have won four straight after sweeping Miami. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. We must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. produce. This election year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics, and we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black flag. First things first. First, it's the DU General, Money P. I'ma put you up on the schedule. Six to nine, eight weekdays, not two and seven. Years. We got a lot to talk about, so much to pedal through. Unapologetically progressive. Tune to KPLA 1580 to get the mess. we your ancestors' favorite radio station. First, black on talk radio, left side of the nation. First. Me and Dominique the Prima go way back. Tap, smiley, making sure the station stays black. Yeah. Discussing all the issues in our community. We're host of black and brown and others find unity. So let's talk about it. Talk Maybe we can improve it. Digital underground, always down with the movement. So we tune in to First Things First with the Queen of Black Talk Radio, Dominique to Prima. Go, sis. Go, sis. KBLA Talk 1580. Good morning and God bless. I'm Dominique DePrima. This show is called First Things First and my first thing today, tomorrow and yesterday, giving thanks, giving praises and asking for blessings from God, asking for the blessings of the ancestors and the elders and getting it moving. So the way we do things around here, usually our one, we look at what's going on locally. Our two, we go national international and beyond. And in the third hour, we do a deep dive with a person or persons of interest. We're kind of sort of pretty much mostly doing that today. Um, it's me, you on the microphone, hour one, the perfect moment to call me 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580, hour two. Um, you can also call me, but we will be joined by Dr. Gerald Horn, man almighty, this of course, um, the anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We'll delve into that and look at some issues impacting us right now, right now, all that with Dr. Horn. So that should be quite an amazing and informative hour. Hour three, the legendary poet, um, author, and activist, Luis Rodriguez, joins me. So You'll be invited in for that as well. But certainly, you know, I was thinking of the conversation um, with Sharon Kyle, publisher of the L.A. Progressive that we had earlier in the week. And it was so interesting to hear her perspective as a black progressive who's been in the space 
of progressive politics for decades, right? And what that means and how it fits in with what's going on with our community. I'm interested to have a similar conversation with Luis, who is a Latino, uh, Chicano, indigenous, uh, progressive, who's been progressive in that space for many a time, um, even while being connected with the streets. As you know, he wrote uh, Mi Vida Loca and um, It Calls You Back and many, many other tomes that are definitely worth our time and attention. Anyway, we got a lot going on around here, but you are part of that. 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580. If you're at work or you're shy or you just are a visual learner, <laughs> as they say, go to youtube.com and type in KBLA 1580 and you'll you'll find a group of folks that um, hang out and you know, watch this radio program, this podcast, and have a running commentary there as well. I always love hearing from you guys on that. And yeah, let's let's get into all of the things. That eclipse that Sahara was talking about on Monday, um, it is next Monday, all right? So between Mercury retrograde and this eclipse, this is a time to breathe and slow the heck down. Do not cut the car off in traffic, no matter how annoying they are. Do not, you know, practice your stunt leap from building to building. This is just a time to slow down and be a little extra careful. Give yourself a little extra grace. I mean, the next week and a half, really. Just, you know, be kind to yourself. I am not the world's most patient person, as you may have observed. (laughs) If you are um, part of our KBLA delegation. Uh, I've gotten better. I think those are the good things that come with, you know, maturity or um, as uh, Tavis would say, chronological giftedness. But at times like this, I have to double and triple check myself because, you know, you you don't want to do a little thing that ends up changing the trajectory of your life for the negative because you're impatient. Forget this person. I'm going to speed up and go around them and, you know, run into a wall and suddenly, you know, your life can change in an instant. So let's just give ourselves some grace and practice that elusive, um, elusive quality known as patience, that virtue known as patience. So the, I was talking yesterday about the earthquake in Taiwan. It was a 7.4. And every time there's a huge earthquake, Anywhere in the world, I think about us here in L.A. because we we have short memories. We are quick to forget and move on. And I get it. I'm, you know, I've, I've had some terrifying experiences in those temblers, so I don't like to ponder them all the time. I was talking about how we need to double check our emergency preparedness kit. Do you got your flashlight with batteries at work? Do you have extra batteries? Do you have a small, old-fashioned, or a big old-fashioned, battery-operated radio. Um, All of those things are important. The gloves, the heavy boots, you know, that you keep somewhere near where you sleep. So, Because for some reason, big earthquakes like to come in the middle of the night. Um, But what I didn't pick up on that today's LA Times article delves into is, I always say, well, you know, our building codes are better than Haiti or presumably Taiwan, so we wouldn't have the same kind of damage. But what this LA Times article points out is that even though our building codes now are better, there are still a lot of structures in Los Angeles that predate those codes that are still dangerous. There is a list of 6,000 buildings in LA that are made of concrete and have not been retrofit, so they would crumble. And Of course, Los Angeles is not the only. Surrounding uh, counties also have this issue throughout the state of California. Apparently, that Taiwan earthquake didn't happen in a really busy, populated area. Uh, And so they didn't have the kind of widespread death and destruction that we've seen in Haiti, um, in other places. But it's pretty, it was pretty strong. And so... 
I, I don't know where that list is, but I'm pretty sure you could find it online. Most of these are going to be office buildings or, um, you know, buildings that are used for business. But some of them are places where folks are living, apartment buildings. And I know that we were meant to retrofit them. It's been on the to-do list of the city, the county, the state, uh, but in many cases hasn't happened yet. That's something I would want to know if I'm living in one of those buildings. To me, that would be worth checking into um, as far as, you know, what's going on with this building and can I prod the owner of the building? Um, can I prod my elected to see um, to see what we can do about that? So, yeah, we're looking at more rain. We're looking at the the back to <laughs> winter and spring. I, you see, I'm I'm in my whites. I'm like, nope, you know, my spring. I'm gonna insist that it's spring, even if it's cold outside. But it looks like we've got, uh, you know, a rainy slog ahead. And I guess that is good. Um, apparently somebody stole millions of dollars from a place where they store money in Silmar. There's an investigation underway. The um, FBI and the LAPD are looking into it. Tens of millions of dollars stolen on Easter Sunday. Now that's bold, right? <laughs> You're going to... I mean, you're going to pull off a heist. I guess it makes sense from a criminal mind because people would be paying less attention on Easter. But who knew that there were places where they stored tens of millions of dollars? I didn't know that. It wasn't me. <laughs> um, it's called Garda World. Um, and they they managed to get in there without <clears throat> excuse me, setting off any alarms. They went in through the roof. That's like, That's like some movie stuff. Oceans 52. Um, that's crazy, though, to me, with all of the surveillance that we have everywhere, the cameras that we have, the alarm system. Speaking of which, apparently Glendale police had put out a warning because some of the thieves and burglars now have some kind of a device that can jam your Wi-Fi and keep the alarm system from working. So, you know, makes sense. It's like the the burglars in, in San Francisco and the Bay Area have this thing that will scan your trunk to see what's in there. So taking your purse and stuff off of the seat and putting it in the trunk doesn't work there. They can they will scan and see what's inside and break into your car anyway. My friends in the Bay were like, don't even leave anything in the trunk. Not a suitcase, not a purse, nothing. They will break in and take it. Apparently this device jams your Wi-Fi. So I guess the solution that they're suggesting is plugging your Wi-Fi into Ethernet so it's hardwired um, and apparently less less easy to be jammed. I don't know who wants to do that. You're running wire all across your home. But hey, you know, I, I guess with the advances in technology come advances in crime, you know, uh, whether it's cyber ransoms or trunk scanners. Um, and I wonder what role AI plays in that. Um, you know, I don't know, cause I haven't really delved into it. Miles, you've done a little bit more, um, delving into the, to the chat GPT and, and the various, um, AI models. Interesting though, that a, a big, oh, several dozen artists released a letter calling on the big artificial intelligence um, developers to practice fairness when it comes to intellectual property and rights. Ice Cube was way out in front on this. He said, y'all copy my voice or my style at all one bit. Know that you'll be sued. Know that I will throw the book at you. And I, I love that because he got out in front of it. And now it seems like everyone's looking over their shoulder going, oh, hell no. Because folks are starting to realize that artificial intelligence could copy your voice, your writing style, even you. <laughs> and I wonder how effective that is. Like, I th I'm glad they did that, but I wonder how effective that is because those companies are under no obligation other than, you know, being sued or boycotted to, to respect your 
essence as a human being, your soul, your style, your intellectual property, your artistic babies, you know, the things you give birth to through your own creativity. There's nothing that forces them to do so. And once again, we're in a situation where the technology is ahead of the law. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we're catching up. Um, those are the kinds of things that make me glad we do have Senator Alex Badia, you know, in the Congress because this guy is, you know, a PhD. This, I mean, uh, he, he's a Caltech graduate. He's a, um, a brainiac. Most of the folks in Congress and myself included, I'm not in Congress, but most of the opinion makers and lawmakers even regulators do not have the technological knowledge to really qualify to provide oversight in these areas. 809-20-1580, 809-20-1580. Did you know the LAPD trains police departments around the world? I knew that the Israeli um, police force and IDF trained police here especially in Cop City in Atlanta, and using their militaristic tactics on regular citizens. I did not know how much the LAPD is exporting their tactics worldwide. We'll take a little look at that when we come forward. KBLA Talk 1580. She's reclaiming her time on KBLA Talk 1580. More First Things First with Dominic DePrima when we come forward. We've got a lot to talk about. about. Are you interested in catching up on all the latest entertainment news, trending topics, and exciting interviews? I got you. Tune in to The Raw Report with Robin Ayers, Monday through Friday, 6 to 7 p.m. I'm your host, Robin Ayers. Join me every weekday with some of the best entertainment contributors in the business as we break down what's going on, who's got next, and what not to miss. Only on The Raw Report with Robin Ayers. Unapologetically progressive. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. I'm going out with the girls this weekend. Nails done. Outfit stunner. And my skin I know it's going to be glowing because I glammed up my shower routine with new Olay Indulgent Moisture Body Wash. It smells so luxurious and moisturizes deep into my skin with its super rich, creamy lather that's bursting with vitamin B3. So my skin glows and my confidence grows. Try new Olay Indulgent Moisture Body Wash for glowing skin in just 14 days. Yeah, y'all, come on. Come on. At KBLA Talk 1580, we fight the power every day. Yeah. Got to give us what we want. Uh, Got to give us what we need. Hey. I listen to KBLA, and I love the commercials. I know what the commercials mean. I also, if I'm looking and trying to figure something out, I need something to talk to me that might hit me. And it happens on TV because, you know, every time they show a sporting event, they got the pharmaceutical companies back to back to back selling people how to fix the sickness on the same stuff that they sell them. So we get it. Yep, we get it too, Chuck D. And that's why at KBLA Talk 1580... We don't black down. Drop it. Our freedom of speech is freedom of death. We, we got, got to fight the power that be. Fight the power. 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 The thing no one tells you about periods is that your flow changes every day and so should your tampon size. Tampax has five absorbencies to match your changing flow. If it hurts to remove, go down a size. If it leaks, go up a size. Only Tampax has a leak guard braid to help give you up to 100% leak and odor-free protection. All day comfort and protection for under $5 a month. Based on average U.S. consumer usage at manufacturer suggested price, however, pricing is at the sole discretion of the retailer. Excludes eight your ancestors favorite radio station radio station and your favorite morning show host let's get back to dominique de prima right now right now you're back to me we're back to you 809-20-1580 809-20-1580 man they almost they might have got 30 million dollars miles that is big 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 money Woo. lapd uh, no, I was. I'm talking about the that heist. <laughs> talking oh, okay. about that heist from the money storage spot. But uh, no, speaking of LAPD, so they do. Um, they do have a massive side hustle, I guess you could call it, training foreign police departments. And this was a brilliant um, article by Liber uh, Janney of the LA Times, talking about how 
widespread this influence is. I did not know this. Um, the training people in the United um, Arab Emirates um, and other places, uh, Russia, Qatar, these are places that are not known for their uh, wonderful human rights records. And here you have the Los Angeles Police Department, which is typically one of the deadliest departments in the country. It's almost always in the top three, usually number one, in terms of how many people they kill per capita. Um, and they so there are these exchanges. They so-called visit uh, law enforcement agencies overseas. <clears throat> it's supposed to be a bit of an exchange, right? Um, but what ends up, there were, you know, there were a couple of classes at the police academy here in LA that have included foreign cops who went through police training here. Um, we know they have a strong relationship with Israeli forces, the, the police and the IDF. Um, they say it's because Israeli forces are great at fighting extremism. Um, domestic terror. And we have talked about this before. We talked about it in terms of the Stop Cop City project, right? Because of that massive police slash military base that they are trying to build in Atlanta right next to a black neighborhood in the woods. Massive sprawling campus in the woods. Because we know there's plans for the IDF to train cops there. And it's not just cops from the United States, I mean, from, from Atlanta, it's cops from all over that will go to this special training area to get state-of-the-art updates on what they do and military drills. And for those of us who have been outspoken about wanting to demilitarize the police, that's a huge problem. Um, but this is, an, uh, this is a long-going on going tradition for the LAPD, and I just didn't realize the extent of it. Apparently in 2002, according to Jenny's article, the Jewish Institute for National Security of America sponsored an LAPD delegation to spend a week in Israel, and they went to military um, outposts, they went to the police, um, you know, facilities, and looked at Israeli border patrol, in Israel itself, but also in the West Bank. For those of us who complain or have genuine concern about our police department operating as an occupying army in black communities, in Latino communities, this should be alarming. Uh, apparently... LAPD has sent bomb squad technicians um, to learn from Israel. These are things that, in at least one instance cited here, the mysterious Los Angeles Police Foundation has paid for. They call it a nonprofit independent fundraising group. I think that's a charitable description. Independent of what? <laughs> I mean, it's theoretically it's not controlled by the police chief, but we've talked about that on this show too, how chiefs and other activists within the police department have raised money, helped raise money for the Los Angeles Police uh, Foundation so they could use it for pet projects like most recently that robot dog, right? Speaking of militarizing police forces, robot dogs that can co go into a scene or an apartment and kill someone. Well, the LAPD swears they're not arming the robot dogs, but really? Hmm. Remember they said they weren't using drones? <laughs> yeah, we know how that turned out. So the question is, I mean, and some will say, okay, we're getting valuable training. We're probably um, getting some dollars from this from some of these places like the um, Arab Emirates. But, well, the LA Times article claims that the problem is because of the perception of what's happening in Gaza, it's problematic for the department's image. 
as being unbiased. I would go a step further than just image. It's problematic for methodology. If you're being trained by people who have a, you know, under the Netanyahu administration and, and their long tradition, they have a, the, well, the IDF is, is a military, so they're going to be militaristic, right? But they also have a long history of occupying the West Bank and Gaza, and now you're getting trained by them. To me, it's not just their image of impartiality. It is their actual practices and how that mindset infiltrates a department which already has a lot of mindset problems. And particularly when it comes to racial hierarchy and the caste system and how that plays out in policing. In Los Angeles, we've seen it from the metro, the data around those metro stops, right, where they were, are, because metro has crept back on the scene, stopping black people at much higher rates than anyone else, even though black people had contraband at much lower rates. So what does that mean? That means logically, because white folks are more likely to have illegal stuff in their cars, if you were just logical, you would be pulling over white folks at higher rates. But the logic of white supremacy means you continue to pull over more black people. And then next in, in that hierarchy are Latinos, the hierarchy of white supremacy or racism. So, which, you know, are synonymous. Uh, so what does that tell you? Now you want to add on to that the mentality of a literal occupying army. Um, the other thing, you know, cited here, according to L Stop LAPD Spying, which is a uh, an activist group in Southern California, that they're getting trained by the IDF and they're then turning around and spreading that training <laughs> to other parts of the world on concepts about radicalization that actually teach them to target Muslims. And that's a problem. I mean, you're really being trained to target Muslims. And you're being trained by a force that clearly practices a caste system, which we know is worldwide. But, I mean, if you think about the, the fact that the United States of America is what Nazi Germany looked to for inspiration for their caste system. They used the Jim Crow model. The irony of now exporting that kind of a philosophy from Israel back to the United States the circle of oppression is just astounding. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Whatever else is on your mind, 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580, KBLA, talk 1580. More of First Things First with Dominique DePrima when we come forward. I'm Mike Moore. Here's the latest from the Black Information Network. At least three people are dead and several injured after storms and tornadoes swept through the South and Ohio Valley this week. Two people were killed by falling trees on Wednesday in Pennsylvania. Another person was killed in Kentucky Tuesday in a car accident blamed on the storms. At least 10 others were injured in Indiana. In Memphis, Tennessee, the National Civil Rights Museum is hosting the annual remembrance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. today. Martin Luther King Jr. III will speak at the free event at the Lorraine Motel site where his father was assassinated in 1968. Winners of the Young Poetry and Spoken Word Competition will be performing as attendees reflect on the impact of Dr. King's work. The African-American civil rights leader was assassinated 56 years ago. And that's the latest. I'm Mike Moore from your 24-7 news source, the Black Information Network, and dinnews.com. 
after a breakout 2023 season, Bazooka is getting the bobblehead treatment on Saturday, April 13th at 6, 10 p.m. against the Padres. First 40,000 fans take home the first ever Bruce Zargatterall bobblehead presented by Yamaha Resort and Casino. Visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Now your ideas don't have to wait. Dell Technologies and Intel are pushing what technology can do. So great ideas can happen right now. Find out how to bring your ideas to life at Dell.com. Welcome to now. Is this, the time? this is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The Lakers capped a 5-1 Eastern road trip with a 5-point win at Washington. Anthony Davis had 35 points and 18 rebounds. LeBron dropped 25 with 9 assists. The Lakers are 8-1 in their last 9 games, but they haven't been able to move out of the ninth spot in the Western Conference. The teams ahead of them, Dallas, Phoenix, and Sacramento, keep winning as well. With 5 games left in the regular season, moving up from the ninth spot is important. If the Lakers are ninth at the end of the season, they will have to win 2 games in the playing round to make the playoffs. The Clippers are back in action tonight at Crypto.com. They play the Denver Nuggets. Tip-off at 7 on TNT. Kawhi Leonard's status for tonight's game is uncertain. He's got a sore right knee. Big props to Angels' new manager, Ryan Washington. The Angels have won four straight after sweeping Miami. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20, a Pfizer vaccine. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. If you're 19 or older with chronic conditions like asthma, diabetes, COPD, or heart disease, or are 65 or older, you are at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Prevnar 20, pneumococcal 20-valent conjugate vaccine. It can help protect you against pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with other pneumonia vaccines, Prevnar 20 may help provide added protection. Prevnar 20 is approved for adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. Side effects include pain and swelling at the injection site, fatigue, headache, muscle, and joint pain. For full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. We must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. produce. This election year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics, and we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black flag. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. When you use bounce dryer sheets and your clothes look amazing, it's the sheet. Less static in your life? Yeah, it's the sheet. Smelling fresher than ever? It's the sheet. Oh, so soft fabric? Ooh la la. It's the sheet. Less wrinkles on your clothes? You know it's the sheet. Bounce dryer sheets. More freshness, more softness. Less static, less wrinkles. It's the sheet. Thanks for waking up with Dominique De Prima on KBLA Talk 1580. A fine good morning to uh, the chat. Uh, Molly Bell's in there talking to Miles about basketball. You know, I, I don't follow sports like I used to, but um, I, even I know that the uh, women's basketball has been fire, right, Miles? Fire, fire. The uh, WNBA women's, uh, I'm sorry, the NCAA women's tournament has been incredible. These girls are balling at a level we haven't seen collectively. 
I love that. And I, I remember a long time ago, people used to say, oh, well, women's basketball is boring, blah, blah, blah. They don't dunk and they don't do this. And, they, and, and I remember thinking, let's go back to men's basketball at the beginning when it was per- first professional, when it was first at a high level. They weren't doing all that stuff. It took a while of development, of investment, you know what I mean, before people started getting on the high level and doing all the stuff they do now. So it looks like that development is happening with the, you know, with women's college basketball and um, even professional basketball just leveling up. Yeah, I think it's uh, definitely taking that step forward. Um, a, a, a lot more. You do notice the fundamentals that are still – you know, getting getting worked out at the women's level. Um, and I think that that kind of, you know, really highlights how great of a step the great ones have really taken when they're playing next to somebody at that level. With the WNBA, they're all the most elite of the elite. But right. playing against, you know, walk-ons, you got Caitlin Clark, you just see the actual difference and evolution <laughs> of the game. Like a, a literal evolution of the game in front of your eyes. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been a real incredible tournament. I mean, I've never, I've watched a lot of pro sports. I've never really watched much college. But um, I remember, you know, my sister, my late sister, Shani Baraka, may she rest in peace. She, um, she was amazing at basketball. We talked about that. It was because she was always playing with my brothers, right? And all these roughnecks from... Over there on, you know, South 10th Street in Newark, where my dad's house is. So by the time she started playing in high school and college, she was used to playing against boys all the time. And so, yeah, I I love that. I love that for women's sports. I love that for women's basketball, just for the opportunity. Think of all the people who have been great over the years, but actually didn't have an outlet, you know, didn't have those career opportunities. So go Molly Bell. Um I want to take a moment to talk about Amanda Seals because it's been a hot topic on she, not it, has been a hot topic on um, the internets because she she got on Instagram. I She's probably on other platforms. I saw her on Instagram talking about how the mainstream black media and these award shows do not include her or invite her, even though they, you know, she's participated as a host or she's participated in the past in projects that are recognized that she's often snubbed and not invited. And for some reason, all of these media outlets, Essence and more more recently, the Grio have seen fit. And she says three, I don't know what the other three or four, I don't know what the other articles are. I just saw Essence and the Grio where they're blaming her saying, like this Grio headline says, Amanda Seals is not a victim of anything but her own hubris. And and the, the, they say here she, you know, Amanda Seals recently complained, this is a Grio, about not being supported by black media or invited into black spaces, and she seemingly does not understand why people don't rock with her. Wow. Amanda Seals was on my show once. I was, it was really fun. If you missed it, you can find the podcast wherever you get your podcast for free. She's on Tavis's show all the time. Um, I've met her. She's nice. She's kind. She's funny. She's smart. Uh, I don't know what hubris you're talking about. I have interviewed many a celebrity over my career. Most of them, I don't expect them to remember me, but I remember them. Um, whether it be, uh, you know, and when I was on Channel 4 in San Francisco, the NBC affiliate there, or whether it was The Beat or Front Page um, or here on KBLA. And there are some that stand out for being stuck up, being, um, you know, having excessive pride. There are some, I'm not going to name any names. There are some that seem to be so out of touch with regular people or caught up in their own, you know, needs, wants, and, well, we'll name one, (laughs) Donald Trump. (laughs) He's like, he's a poster boy for hubris, right? That giant ego that doesn't even seem to have the ability to consider other people's feelings or other people's realities. That's not Amanda Seals. Amanda Seals is caring. She 
reads. She, whether you agree with her or you don't agree with her, she's not just making stuff up and posting it. She's not the one posting about Biden putting, you know, Trans Day of Visibility on Easter Sunday when anyone who reads more than one article knows that Easter Sunday's date is determined by the moon, not Biden. He doesn't control the moon. <laughs> it's con- it's it's decided by the moon and and the the turning season. Um, and Trans Day of Vis- Visibility has been on the same day since 2009. Let it go. People post stuff with no idea what they're talking about. That's not Amanda Seals. When she posts, she'll give you her opinion. You can agree or disagree, but it's fact-based. Fact-based. She's a gymnast, or well, a former gymnast. She's a great actress, right? Uh, really good, was really good in uh, Insecure and other projects. She's been an artist, uh, toured as a rapper. I mean, and she's an influencer. And I just want to call on us. And obviously, she's got a lot of supporters. She's she's making a living doing stand-up comedy tours throughout the country and on her Patreon because she's got a lot of followers online that actually subscribe to her content and pay for it. So obviously, she's likable to a lot of people. I don't understand the press piling on this woman. Why are we, the black press, using our precious platforms to degrade and belittle a black woman? It doesn't make sense to me. I understand. We talked about this yesterday with Jasmine Canning. When you put yourself in the public eye, you do open yourself up to being ridiculed, harassed, um, you know, criticized. I get that. I've dealt with it myself. But, But we as black press don't have to do that. It's one thing if people on social media are like, ah, oh, you know, you ain't funny. Or I remember reading in her post, get a man when she was in a relationship. With, and I've seen those posts in me. You know, I had a guy on YouTube the other day telling me I never talk about the race, rampant racism in my home country of the Dominican Republic. I'm black American with an Italian mom. I've never even been to the Dominican Republic. Do some research before you write some dumb stuff. But okay, that's that's a person who, uh, you know, is online. They're not a journalist. But for Essence Magazine and the Grio, these are some of the most read and trusted sources for black people. Um, for us to be piling on a black woman, why? For what? I stand with Amanda Seals. I found her kind, funny, uh, down to earth, actually. For someone who's beautiful to look at, smart and wildly popular she could be quite stuck up but she didn't come off that way at all she didn't have that you know snatch your wig reality show vibe (laughs) like i hate all black women she she didn't she wasn't stuck up to the people in the building when she came she was taking pictures with everybody i i don't I, i i wonder if it's more about her opinions if it if it's more about the bold positions that she takes um, than actually her supposed like ability. Like ability. Remember they used to say that about Hillary Clinton. She's not likable. That's so subjective. One person's likable is another person's pain in the ass. Like, what are you talking about? That is completely subjective. And usually likability, when they say likability with women, They're saying they want you to play more of a traditional feminine role, you know, shut up in mascara, right, or whatever. That's usually what it means when they say likability. And I, yeah, I I want it. She's asked for us to make it stop. I want it to stop, and I'm trying to do my part as a member of the black press to pile on in the other direction. You know, if you got a, if you got time today, go on one of her socials and show her some love. She's getting a lot of love, but show her some more love. Um, and I, I don't think it's fair for us to gang up, us, the black press, to gang up on an African-American woman who's doing good work every single day and minding her own black-owned business. 
I'm Dominique Dupreme, and you're listening to KBLA Talk 1580. Say the quiet part out loud. KBLA Talk 1580. We ask seniors how to prevent Medicare scams. My best advice, if you get a phone call, do not talk to the person. These people are well-trained. Don't talk to them. They don't know me. They're just trying to scam me. Don't be fooled. Hang up. Just hang up. Never give out your Medicare number. They're going to get your number to put in a false claim. If I get a call from someone, I don't pick up the phone. And should I pick up the phone and ask for information, then I hang up. How do you detect Medicare fraud? Just like I check my credit card statements, I check my Medicare statements monthly. Scammers can get a hold of your number, order medical devices through your account, and you're not even going to know about it if you don't look at your statement. Check your statement every month. If you get your statement and you see something that you know you did not have done, you report it. Call your senior Medicare patrol. To report Medicare fraud, call the Senior Medicare Patrol at 855-613-7080. It's the celebration of a living legend. It's the farewell tour. It's Mays featuring Frankie Beverly. Thank you for the love to the end. Also featuring the soul icon, Anthony Hamilton. Plus, after 7, it's a Mother's Day celebration. May 12th in the Kia Forum. In commemoration. Come in your all white. Get tickets at Ticketmaster. Presented by the Black Promoters Collective. Hey, L.A., be an eco-friendly hero. Join LADWP's Power Savers program and use your smart thermostat to help ease strain on the electric grid during peak electric demand. You'll save electricity while you lower your bill. Plus, as a power saver, you can get up to $185 in prepaid gift cards. Don't have a smart thermostat? No problem. Shop and sign up at LADWP.com slash Power Savers program. That's LADWP.com slash Power Savers program. To help combat climate change, LADWP is helping neighborhoods have better access to electric vehicles by awarding nearly $130 million in EV rebates to customers just like you. From big savings on used EVs to building new charging plazas, LADWP is charging ahead to help all Angelinos experience the benefits of EVs. Get rebates of up to $4,000 for a used EV and $1,750 for a charger. Learn more at LADWP.com slash EV. That's LADWP. Dot com slash EV. We knew you'd stick around. This is LA's home for progressive talk radio. Be heard. Welcome back to KBLA Talk 1580. So San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies shot and killed another teenager this week. Uh, actually, it's their second in about three weeks. About Yeah, about three weeks. Um, this guy was inside of a foster home. In Victorville, he was, um, there was a call made that there was an unwanted subject in the house. Apparently, he's, his sister was staying in that foster home. He had been hospitalized for trying to harm himself, was supposed to go to a mental health facility, but went to his sister's instead, had locked himself in the bathroom with a knife and was trying to cut himself. To me, when you say someone is armed and they're trying to cut themselves that's not the same as someone threatening others that's a mental health crisis apparently the deputies busted open the bathroom door and got into a struggle with this guy there's body cam footage they haven't said the name of the child um from what i see it does not appear to be a black child i'm guessing probably latino but i don't know we haven't had a name released um, and they were struggling with the, with the kid and one deputy reportedly cut and they kill him. It's, it's, a, you know, it, this is the same department that killed Ryan Gaynor, the autistic child, 15 year old who, you know, the family had called for help. And then the family called and said, no, we don't need the help. His dad has calmed him down. We're good. The deputies came anyway and killed this child. These speak to what we keep talking about, which is having mental health professionals respond to mental health crises. Unhoused specialists dealing with unsheltered people. Unhoused specialists 
or mental health professionals if needed, and how we can save lives by having professionals who are trained to deal with people that are having a self-harm crisis. Otherwise, it's, well, you're trying to kill yourself. Don't worry, we'll do it for you. What is that? That's not acceptable. That's terrible. Another child dead. And, you know, they're going to say he was armed and and an officer got cut. I don't want to see any officer, deputy, whatever, get cut. But you know you've got a suicidal child locked in the bathroom. You bust down the door. Um, And, you know, it's worrisome because we're starting... One of the things that was widely accepted, even by people who didn't want to see a major reimagining of how we do in law enforcement, is that cops can't do everything, right? We need to have mental health professionals responding to mental health. We need to have autism professionals dealing with autism situations. That's been pretty widely agreed upon by the public, and even law enforcement has admitted that. But I'm starting to see the signs of them backing up from that. The L.A. Fire Department, for example, is saying that they want to end this program that sends mental health workers to non-emergency calls. They say it actually didn't free up first responders, didn't help relieve um, overcrowding in hospital emergency rooms. They said eh, they, they have these therapeutic vans with mental health workers who respond Um, instead of fire department, paramedics, uh, medical technicians. They said it was good in theory, but it didn't work in practice. And they're saying that um, those mental health workers didn't have the, they weren't qualified to deal with the medical assessments or, or handle the emergency medical services needed by those folks. That worries me. Why not say we need to tweak this program? We need to find a way to, to where we have, you know, medical professionals available or teams of medical and mental health. Why are they saying let's just get rid of it? This was a partnership between the city of Los Angeles and the Department of Mental Health that started in 2021 out of, I'm sure, the protests of 2020. Uh, it cost $4 million. Those are vans that operate 24 hours a day. And they're saying it doesn't work well. My my concern is, why are you just saying, let's trash it? It's a new program. It's only going back to 2021. Let's tweak it. Let's fix what's not working. I don't want to see this erosion away from the idea of having specialists handle what they are trained to do rather than shooting someone being the answer to everything. 800-920-1580. It's a perfect time to call me, y'all. My KBLA delegation. That's what we do. We amplify black and progressive voices around the clock. We are KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580 is an intervention. When we come forward, includes you. KBLA Talk 1580, turning pain into power. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 believes in community empowerment. LA's 99 neighborhood councils form the grassroots level of the Los Angeles city government. The system was created to connect LA's diverse communities to City Hall. While neighborhood council board members are volunteers, they are also public officials elected to office by the members of their community. Neighborhood councils advocate on issues like homelessness, housing, land use, emergency preparedness, public safety, parks, transportation, and sustainability. They also provide local expertise on the delivery of city services to their various communities. Neighborhood councils are open to participation by anyone who is a part of the fabric of daily life in said community. This includes those who live, work, or own property, or a business. If you are interested in stepping up to join your local neighborhood council, visit www.empowerla.org. That's empowerla.org. It's time to think globally, but act locally. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Watch out! The galaxy is safe once again. 
In the pretend universe, kids play with pretend guns. In the real world, it's up to us to make sure they don't get their hands on a real gun. If you have a gun in the house, keep it locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council. Heard any other talk radio lately that sounds anything like this? I didn't think so. You're listening to Unapologetically Progressive, KBLA Talk 1580. Really looking forward to talking with historian, author, and just uh, one of the smartest people I know, Dr. Gerald Horn. He's joining us next hour. In the final hour, we'll be talking with poet, activist, and uh, gubernatorial candidate, uh, former gubernatorial candidate, Luis Rodriguez. So lots of great stuff on deck today. A little, I consider it good news, a palate refresher. Um, Mayor Karen Bass, along with uh, Holly Mitchell, who's our L.A. County supervisor, and Senator Alex Padilla, um, Stephanie Wiggins, the Metro CEO, making a big announcement on yesterday $900 million in federal funding coming to Los Angeles to help get our transportation infrastructure together uh, before the 2028 Summer Olympics. That's great news. Um, I think it's great news. I love to see how LA's public transportation is improving, growing, becoming viable. Um, you know, we've had two metro two black Metro CEOs in a row, Phil Washington, now Stephanie Wiggins. And we have effective advocacy in Washington from both our mayor, who used to be a congresswoman, right, until she became mayor, and people like Senator Padilla, who is an engineer. Yeah, he's a brainiac. And, you know, is focused on bringing home those transportation dollars. Um, So it's going to be used for a lot of different things that majority of the money goes to East San Fernando Valley's light rail rail project um, and the purple line uh, subway extension project, which that one will complete being able to go from downtown um, all the way to um, to uh, the west side. And this is awesome. Um, It's going to connect downtown L.A. to West L.A., Um, All of these things are going to be important because uh, the roads are going to keep getting more and more and more and more and more crowded. Um, Probably, likely. I mean, I suppose it's possible everyone moves to Texas like they're always predicting, but I doubt it. Um, And then there is um, money that's going to various community projects in Los Angeles um, that are, you know, fixing problems, challenges, adding green space, adding bridges, connecting uh, more affluent neighborhoods that are adjacent to uh, lower resourced communities that deserve access. Um, uh, Representative Jimmy Gomez was also there. And this is, he says, this is some of the money will be helped, help to, you know, deal with access, righting the wrongs of the past, meaning connecting communities to resources that should be connected. And I know some of y'all are not fans of the Olympics. I am. I love the international camaraderie. I love sports. I love greatness. Um, But I think it's important that we shore up the public transportation so we can put our best foot forward and the city doesn't have to come to a grinding halt. Looking forward to the conversation with Dr. Gerald Horn. That's next after news traffic and sports on KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA 1580.